Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here's your host, Sean Keating. Hey everyone, Sean here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. This week's episode is sponsored by Spear Education. Our guest this week is a graduate of the University of Central Florida and the University of Maryland Baltimore College of Dental Surgery. She's a master in the Academy of General Dentistry and an ADA speaker at the dental schools across the United States. She has an upcoming article on anterior composite restorations on Spear Education. Practicing from Lafayette, Colorado, please welcome Dr. Dawn Waking, DDS. How's it going, Dr. Waking? Hey, thanks so much for having me. That's so cool, man. I, I'm sitting there going, <laughs> I'm going to talk to a doctor. I don't really know. Usually all my doctors are, uh, you know, customers of Keating Dental Arts in my dental lab. And we kind of started this to just kind of, you know, talk to my guys. But um, it's really yeah. cool with uh, Spear kind of stepping up and they're going to be bringing us uh, some lectures and some different dentists to come on board here every once in a while. And they're going to sponsor the, you know, the Dental Up podcast. So you're our first one from Spear Education, man. Tell me a little bit about about that. Oh. How'd you get involved with Spear? Yeah, well, um, you know, I found Spear because I am immediately out of school, just I had this wave of incompetence. Like I completely felt unprepared for the real life. So um, I went to one workshop and um, it just sort of Stop. I fell in love with them. Oh. I can't stop going. <laughs> I've learned so much from them. So I'm just thankful to be a part of their crew. Oh, uh, no, nah, that's so cool. And man, you stumbled across a, a great thing to go to. I mean, because they're like one of the the top uh, education uh, opportunities for dentists, you know, just starting or even existing dentists that have been in the field for a long time or a little time. It's just a great yeah. place to go to to sharpen your skills and to just to really get a good wealth of knowledge from, from all aspects of dentistry. So that's awesome. And we're really excited to be, you know, aligning with them because, you know, it's, it's all about education really when it comes to, you know, dentistry and, and anything, you know, in life, you know, you'd always try to keep yourself on top of, you know, what's happening in your field or your industry and, uh, Spirit Education, <laughs> man's a, a top-notch team to be part of. So thank you so much Definitely. for, for uh, coming on board and taking some time. Uh, you know, I always start off these podcasts, talk, uh, talk a little bit about sports real quick. So are you in <laughs> any of the basketball playoffs? You see any of those uh, games lately or, or no? <laughs> I, I'm embarrassed to say no. Um, <laughs> no however, <don't> <laughs> you know, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the spirit of the game, and I like to get dressed up and drink too much. So <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm excited about sports, but I don't follow them. No, oh, that's a, hey, that's okay. It's a basically um, they had the Western Conference and Eastern Conference uh, finals uh, recently, and last night was the Western and uh, Golden State Warriors won it against the Houston Rockets, and they won it in Game Seven, and it was a great game. And the Golden State Warriors are going to be in the finals for the fourth year in a row, <laughs> and it's like what? Holy cow! Yeah, so wow. for the four years, all these other teams in the NBA have been trying to, you know, get the two, three stars on, you know, draft or or trade for existing guys, trying to compete with, uh, you know, um, the Golden State Warriors, but also on the other side, the Eastern Conference is the Cleveland Cavaliers, which is with LeBron James, and they're going for the fourth time in a row also to the finals. So if it was football, it would be the Super Bowl, but this is basketball, and yeah. it's the championship, and for the last four damn years, it's the same two teams. It's like, what the heck? Oh, my but, gosh. Man, it's kind of like a monopoly, man. And we got all these basketball teams and the two guys for four years in a row. I don't think that's ever happened ever, but... um. 
You know, yeah. it's Golden State. It's where I live, you know, and it's uh, they're a great team. But I was kind of hoping, you know, Boston and Houston be neat to kind of see some other guys go at it. But uh, it, it'll be a good series. But, you know, it's kind of. Yeah, you can't be too disappointed if your team's getting it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lakers are my team, but they, they've been sucking for like four or five years. And Kobe, you know, we had to endure oh, him man. with his retirement. But, um, but you know, Golden State's up there in San Francisco. They're in Northern California. We're Southern California, but still it's a. Yeah. Uh, it's the Golden State, and those guys are freaking monsters. They're so good, but um, I think they're, <laughs> I think they're going to win it. So they've won yeah. two. They've won two of the last four of, of the last three, and then uh, Cleveland won one. So you know if they uh, if they get it, they'll be three of the last four years world champions, which is uh, a pretty pretty awesome feat to have in, in uh, any any sport you know but uh and then also we have it's a real big story in the in the hockey um so we're like say the super bowl now all the playoffs are done and there's two teams and you got the washington capitals that are playing against the um what is it the the golden night las vegas golden knights and this team is like the first te- time they've this is their first year in existence. So they're a new franchise that just uh, started this year. And if you would have bet at the beginning of the season with the sports books, <laughs> it was 500 to one odds, you know, no, 500 to one that they would win it all the Stanley cup, you know, and here they are yet last night, they started the first game of the, of this championship and they beat Washington six, four, man. It's crazy. Wow. So, you know, wow. yeah, so kind of nuts. But um, it's just uh, it's just unbelievable how you know Vegas man they've gone through a lot with all the shooting and all that stuff and the town and yeah. the, you know st- state coming together and it's just uh, it's it's a great story for them to have something to to you know hang their hats on and you know to try to pass some time with the tough times they've had here you know in the last several months but um the team's a real yeah. bright spot for them in the town I've been there at Vegas a few times recently just. Uh, go go with the wifey you know to go you know we go to dinner you know we'll go there for a night yeah. people are saying you're crazy man i said well it's <laughs> like a less than an hour flight we're there and then uh, it's that's just, awesome life is good so but yeah. now nah, good good for uh good for vegas and come on yeah, golden nights <laughs> and then, <laughs> then last but not least we got our horse race I don't, I don't know if it's this weekend or the following weekend but it's the preakness so it's the triple crown and we have a horse that won uh, the Kentucky Derby called Justify, and then he won the Belmont Stakes. Justify won it again, and uh, yes, Shiny Boy bet on it both times, and we thank you, Lord. <laughs> we we won a pocket full of monies, but I don't think I'm going to bet Yay! on this. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, it's stupid. It's, uh, I said I'm not going to do it anymore, but this horse is just so great, but um, <laughs> I had to do it. My wife's like, <laughs> what? fun when you win. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's always fun when you win. But uh, this yeah. this third race, it's the longest race of all three. And the way Justify ran that last race at, at the Belmont Stakes, he was getting caught real quick and he barely won it. And uh, so with the longer distance, everyone's not thinking he's going to do too great. But uh, I don't know. I, I we'll, we'll see it and feel it out. But uh, it'd be kind of neat to see him go for the Triple Crown and win it, you know. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. It's, it's either this week, Saturday, or following Saturday. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, Justify. Justify. Remember that name. <laughs> Hopefully it'll um, it'll win a third one. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll put my vibes out for you. There you go. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. All right. Well, let's dental up a little bit. And I always like to start off and say, what you know, why did you get into dentistry? And at what point did you think, I want to be a dentist? You know, I went to college because I, as a business major, my goal oh. was to get out and open a bar. Oh, okay. And <laughs> so it, it, like like any good researcher does, I spent my summers working at a bar and a really cool one, it, you know, like a little restaurant jazz bar. Okay. And uh, what I came to find is, you know, it's fun seeing seeing people on a regular basis and all of that stuff. Um, and the spirit of the bar is great, but you know, when everybody leaves, you're still there till two, three in the morning cleaning up and all the riffraff that comes with it. So uh, I decided maybe I ought to take a couple steps back and listen to my mama. And (laughs) (laughs) she she had mentioned dentistry when I was little. And at the time, you know, you think, what does mom know? Shut up, mom. Like that, 
that doesn't sound good. But um, in a lot of ways, I think that what I love about dentistry is what I wanted in in the bar career. You know, you see the same people on a regular basis and you're part of the community. And um, and that's the, the biggest part of dentistry that I really love. So it worked out. That's awesome. No, that's totally cool. And I never had that uh, from bar to uh, dentistry, but uh, <laughs> you do meet people every day and uh, they just won't be kind of uh, as happy as uh, in the dental chair, probably. But, <laughs> <laughs> right. No, uh, but the hours are better. It's better. <laughs> yeah. And those restaurants, man, I mean, if you really do, you know, you get into finance and all that, it's probably one of the worst businesses to get in. You know, I mean, I, they say less than. 3% margins on a lot of these restaurants, you know, three to 5%, you know, net, net. And um, it's just not a real good, you know, unless yeah. you got multiple restaurants and volume, it's just, uh, you bust your butt and, you know, especially too in, in the industry, it's like, you gotta, you gotta watch everyone. Cause you know, the bartenders, especially they're going to be over porn and absolutely that yeah, till and everything. <laughs> Kind of we crazy. thought our overhead was tough, but yeah, that sounds rough. Oh, I know. And and the dental field, you know, laboratory field, it's the same thing, you know, five five to ten percent if you're lucky. But um Holy it's, cow. Yeah, it's just it's just tough. And especially nowadays with, you know, dentist, um, you know, things are frugal out there and you know, they're looking for, you know, hey, I can get a ninety nine dollar crown from all over and it's like, <laughs> man, come on now. But, uh, right. Yeah. Now everybody's outbidding you. Huh? Yeah. And it's hard. And, you know, dentists, um, you know, a lot of dentists don't, you know, go for that. They, they want to go for quality and, you know, peace of mind. And, but more so than not, um, a lot of guys, when, you know, your patients are less and less, you know, after that recession, say, oh, seven, oh, eight, they're not coming back to those levels. And, um, it's hard yeah. when a, a dental practice drops 30 to 50% in, um, in, you know, patients, you know, and yeah, uh, they're, they're fighting the same thing, you know, from those, uh, yeah. you know, those practice management groups that are coming in and taking customers, you know, I can do a crown for $399 and that's with x-rays <laughs> and <laughs> right. we'll, we'll uh, bleach your teeth. But you know what? That's just like, you know, everyone says, you know, well, I can get it for cheaper here. Well, I always say too, like, yeah, you can get a hamburger at the local gas station for cheaper than you can at say <laughs> in and out burger, but it is, yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, you, you get what you, you pay get for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, t well, tell me a little bit. Where did you attend school? Tell me a little bit about your college career and how that went for you. Um, I I was an Air Force brat, so we moved around a whole bunch as a kid. Um, but I went to undergrad in Orlando, Florida, and then dental school in Baltimore, Maryland, and then um, just sort of I moved back to Florida and practiced for about five minutes before I moved to Colorado, and this is. Um, this is really the longest I've ever lived anywhere. I've been here for eight years. I'm getting an itch. <laughs> no kidding. That's amazing. What about in, uh, now Lafayette? Where's that at in Colorado? It's uh, kind of in between Denver and Boulder. Okay. Is it by Breckenridge so, at all? Close to you at all? No, we're probably two hours from Breckenridge. Okay. It's kind of a laid back state for you, huh? Everyone smoking weed and everything around there nowadays <laughs> or what? <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't say that any more people are smoking weed than they were before, but um, yeah, it's definitely been good for the economy around here. Uh, yeah, I bet. But yeah, but yeah, it is a, a special kind of people here in Colorado. People are just friendly and nice and uh, uh, helpful. I think even just as far as like, I judge a place by the people that you see at the grocery store, if they're like trying to run you out of the lane or not. And yeah. no, it's <laughs> true. Here, everyone's really nice. Yeah. I see that. Um, I follow this guy uh, on uh, Facebook a little bit, Ryan Swain. And he's a, uh, he, he, yes. he started to tell man, the guy's, <laughs> He's crazy. crazy. I love the guy. He's got a great heart, yeah. but man, he's just, uh, he's got a guitar going and flowers and it's loves in the air. And 
<laughs> you would think, uh, but you know, he's a sharp cookie. The dude is, yeah. he's really sharp, got great hands. And I mean, he could have done fixed pros or anything. And he kind of went in and took a little bit from everyone that he knew. You know, that's what people do. You know, you take a little here, take a little here, a little spear, a little koi, a little, you know, uh, you know, Dawson, a little panky, a little, you know, yeah. kanka. It worked and out you, well for and him. you <laughs> make it your own and then you sell out for a bunch of money and then you do whatever you want. Play a guitar on the interweb and freaking have a million right. views. <laughs> oh my God, that guy is so funny. Oh, uh, you know, you can't teach it. I mean, he just looks right in that camera and he can he can talk to you, he can cry to you, but I'm just like, every time I see him, man, my kids will come in here, my boys, when they're freaking 30 and 33, 31, 33, but they're coming and go, Dad, are you watching Swain again? I go, yeah, I got... <laughs> I just can't take you my can't eyes off stop. this dude. I can't stop. It's the love reg. It's the love revolution, boys. And I go, Dad. <laughs> goes, yeah, hey. you, you uh, cannot stop watching. Oh man, it's kind of crazy, but yeah. So, <laughs> so tell awesome. me, tell me, um, when you were in, uh, so you, you were there for an eye blink a little bit, starting your career in Florida. You associated there, I take it, for a little bit, and then that didn't work out. And then what? You went to Colorado. Did you associate there or did you open a practice? Tell me a little bit about your journey on that. Yeah, I um, I was an associate in Florida and then I came here and worked for a, one of the bigger corporations, which, you know, the corporations get a lot of flack, but I think that there's definitely a place for them in our profession. And um, so I worked for them for two years and then decided, oh, I can do this by myself. And I, uh, I bought a practice from a retiring dentist. Um, and, and and that's sort of when I was like, oh, maybe I can't do this by myself. This is a lot harder than they make it look. <laughs> yeah, oh, I bet. It's, it's got to be tough. Did you take any uh, management courses at that time to kind of run that back office or what you do for some of your CE starting there? Because, you know, one thing is one thing to know, you know, theory and all that and to practice dentistry, yeah. but to run a business, it's a whole nother beast. What did you do on that to educate yourself in that aspect I, of the business? I think I hired every consultant ever. Did you? Um, <laughs> hey, I, I did and, that a uh, lot, too, and I still do. Yeah. Well, and I found that there's some that have a lot of great things to say and there's others that um you know, they want to sit in a circle and hold hands and kumbaya that maybe isn't super beneficial to the business. But, um, you know, part of it, I figured it out by myself. Part of it I got from the consultants and then other CE. Um, also hired a great office manager that really helped with the back end of things. Um, you know, you don't know which but you don't know until Absolutely. somebody actually comes in and shows you what you're missing. Dang, that's perfect. No, that's what you need to do. Tell me a little bit about how you drove patients to your practice at the beginning. Well, what I what I loved about buying an existing office was just it came with that income stream. And okay. uh, the patients were so great that they gave me a chance and they hung in there. And we had a, a really nice retirement party for the old dentist so they could meet me while I was coming in. So... I was lucky to have patients on the schedule when I took over. But then I think what really has helped me a lot was just doing things to become a part of the community around here. Okay. And so when somebody says, hey, do you know a dentist? It's, um, you know, me and one or two other people that are that come to mind. But we've got some really loyal patients just because of what we do with the community that you know, they are diehard, like, go see Don, she'll hook you up. Oh, that's so cool. No, yeah, that sounds a lot. They, they would, I'm sure. Yeah. And that's, that's just great when you have a personal touch and, you know, it's meant, you know, with your heart and, you know, you're out there in the community and really trying to, you know, get involved and stuff. People see that when you're, when you're genuine. And I think that's neat. I had a doctor last week that was um, in a smaller town in Texas and same thing, his biggest thing for marketing is just be involved in the community and be out there, be yeah. out there with the people. And yes, this is, this is Dr. Waking and she's the dentist. And they're like, what? She's a dentist. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's, <Yeah, right. laughs> no, that's so cool. <laughs> so you guys are going pretty strong. What about your practice? How big is it? How many ops you got going? On? Do you have associates? How many hygienists? Tell me a little bit about your layout and your breakdown of your practice. I've um, 
Uh, it's just me, um, no associates. I've got only three operatories and um, we're looking to build out a fourth one this year. But really, I just I'm in a little old house. And um, I love keeping it small. I, I don't do well being in multiple places at once. So mm-hmm. like my biggest nightmare in the corporate world was, you know, when four hygienists are waiting for a check and I've got two other patients in the chair, like how can you possibly take good care of multiple people at the same time? Um, so I like to keep it small. It's been really good. Our overhead is pretty low, so I don't have to to sell a lot of dentistry to make ends meet. And, um, and I like it that way. Oh, that's so cool. No, that's the way it is. And I I have quite a few dentists that actually work out of like older homes that have been around Uh for a long time and they convert them into dental practices. Do you have it to where you live above it on the second story or is it one of those? It's just (laughs) a workplace. (laughs) No, it's just a workplace. I don't know. I thought for a minute about living in the basement and, I, I don't know. That's too much dentistry all the time. <laughs> you need to be able to leave, I think. Oh, yeah, it's so true. No, it is. Yeah. Well, that's pretty huge. Um, well, you have this upcoming article, and it's on anterior composite restorations, and it's on spear education. And uh, tell me about that and how you um, – Tell me a little bit about Spear, if you could, but tell me about your uh, your article about, you know, and these are direct, I take it, direct composites. You're doing chair side, huh? I've been a little bit of a CE junkie. And um, what what's super fun to me is anterior composites because I find them almost, you can match the adjacent tooth for me a little bit easier with composite sometimes than with sending pictures back and forth of the lab. Uh, you know, you you know that sometimes it takes two, three times to get an indirect restoration to match perfectly. Yes. Um, With composite, um, you know, in the right setting, sometimes that's easier for me and more fun. And I um, have been to Brazil to learn from the man, Newton Fall, and I've taken (laughs) almost every course that Spear has to offer. And I go to the AECD every year and do all of their hands-on things and, um, what's what's fun about interior composites is you know you could kind of zone out and it's a little art project but the downside is it takes three hours to to yeah. really do the kind of artistry that you need um, to make it amazing and so what I've really gotten a kick out of is trying to simplify the process and make it quicker okay. so that um, I can actually make it work in my day to day you know if we're if we're taking three hundred dollars for an anterior composite, I can't really afford to sit there for three hours, yeah. but um, I can make it look pretty good in thirty minutes now. And that's what that article is about. Just um, you know, you take out some of the the steps that really nobody notices, except if you take a picture for the ACD and blow it up the size of a car, then, then you notice those little details, but in an everyday composite um, with that doesn't have a whole lot of translucency or craze lines and that kind of thing, you can, you can simplify the process. That's amazing. And I've seen it too. And I've seen some guys that are just wizards out there. I mean, f- yeah. ac- across the board and it's like, damn. And cause you do have to have such a talent um, with, you know, facial anatomy, pericomata, you know, and size of ledges, you know, and, and bringing it adjacently and how you bring it into a matrix to hold it there. And then you got to light it and then you got to <laughs> polish it. And it's a beast, man. I mean, it's kind of like me when I watch these over the shoulder programs with uh, just that, you know, Know, the tack and wave and all this this bonding. I mean, bonding takes 20, 30 <laughs> minutes, it seems like, per tooth, but it's yeah. not. But it's it's just, um, it's a lot of patience, I'm sure, especially with doing direct, you know, chair side composites. There's a couple of guys, a huge, uh, I've seen on Dental Town, I can't remember their names off hands, but uh, they're just so talented. I mean, talk about being a dentist is one thing, but when you can sit there and sculpt interior, you know, composites, you know, freehand. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, freaking, it's amazing. It's a, it's a art 
uh, it's an art, you know, it's a, it's just a real hand skill. And then, you know, when it comes to the depth of color and what you have underlying and, you know, adjacently and the way the light hits it, I mean, it's, it's nothing that easy. And that's why I got a lot of doctors that say, send to the lab, you know, but, uh, <laughs> right. the, yeah, absolutely. It's special. Oh, uh, no, that, that's huge for you. And, uh, especially too, a lot of the, the different composites out there. Um, I mean, there's like, like even my son, he had a lateral that he cracked an incisal edge corner off on something. I think he's probably trying to open a beer bottle or something, but he <laughs> sat there forever and I'm like, dude, you got to get that fixed. And he's like, mm. and he finally went into the, our, our local dentist here and, uh, he went and just, uh, you know, and it's been like two, three years and, uh, it's pretty amazing how it just blended in with the middle third of the prep. You know, it wasn't even a prep, the yeah. natural dentition. And it was just no, no, you know, line that you could see where is the interface of it. And it's just unbelievable that where it's come. And the doctor told me, you know, five years ago, you couldn't really do it where it would last as long. But so I guess uh, some of the products are coming out are a little bit better nowadays. Tell me a little bit about um, like what composites do you like to use? What light? And tell me a little little bit of a kind of how you go about and what you what you like on the, the different composites if you could yeah um i think the the biggest key is to make sure that there you have a couple different um opacities or translucencies of composite because you need a you need a dent shade and you need an enamel shade and so most of the aesthetic composites have that i really like escalate omega and that's what we kind of worked with um, with Newton Fall in Brazil, and that's what they teach at Spear. And it just, it's um, its pretty hardy. There's a strength to it. Um, it's a nano hybrid, so it also polishes really well. Okay. And that's what I find looks amazing about um, some composites versus others. Like you might have a really strong composite that looks okay, but if you can't get it to polish like enamel, then you can, you'll always see that restoration. Oh yeah, now, that's amazing. That's it's just uh, that's a big thing. A lot of doctors don't like to get in a you know posterior. You know, yeah, you could fill a composite occlusally, this and that, just kind of you know set up the prep appropriately. And I can see yeah. you know that a lot of the GPs doing that with with not too much of a a problem. But coming around the horn on the anterior, you know, aesthetics, <laughs> it's um, it is probably very uh very nerve wracking for some of the dentists out there. So if for you to do something like this, to simplify it, I think that's a great thing. And I think that's a, uh, that's uh, something that'll, that'll help dentists out there for sure. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It didn't, um, it, it didn't start so easy. I, I call them <laughs> art Mondays. We used to, I used to do these on my day off and I would say if, if there's one of these that I really want to do, I would ask the patient like, Hey, it's just going to take a little while. Do you mind coming in on Monday? And that's normally when I don't see any patients. So I could spend the whole day doing it and it doesn't affect the bottom line really. Um, yeah. It's so I would start, you know, three hours at a time and then it got two and a half hours, two hours, one hour. So took some time, but we're there. So what about with, you say you have a patient come in and they got diastemas, you know, <laughs> between the central laterals and canines might be pretty good or they have these peg laterals. I mean, have you ever done like three, four, five, six in the front or is it mostly yeah. just one or two or have you done, you know, four through 13? Good Lord. That is a hard day. <laughs> number four through 13. <laughs> I've done it, but, uh, I, that's a hard day yeah. or four but, days really, you know, by the time you get them back to polish and yeah. and adjust everything. But um, usually I'm just doing one or two at a time. Okay. If it's, if it's bigger then I definitely make sure that we've got a wax up and a matrix and that simplifies it. Uh, if it's just one tooth, a lot of times now I'm using my finger as a matrix okay. and that works pretty well. That's awesome. No, so that's awesome. So who taught you a lot of this? You you went out uh, different CE, AACD, this and that, but the Spear, you said Spear had a course on something on, on anterior composites? Yeah, uh, Spear has a really great course on anterior composites. Oh, I have to tell you about the best day of my life that <laughs> happened after that course. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I went to this, after the Spear composite course, I went to the AACD meeting and they've got an anterior composite course that at the end of the day, they say, all right, everyone put your initials on the bottom and put your case in this bucket and we're going to pick the best one out of the case or out of the class. 
and they picked mine. Yeah. And it, no joke, was like the best day of my life. Everyone was like, what? Are uh-huh. you a lab technician? That's amazing. <laughs> no wonder you're the first ringer from Spear Education coming on my podcast. <laughs> if you no. won that, no, you can't teach that, dude. That's freaking awesome, man. I love that. You got to be hey. artsy. I mean, that, that's the name of my company, Keating Dental Art, and that's what we do. And I suck. I mean, I'm like at hands of stone, but I've got a bunch of artists, but they're, you know, you got it. You know, you got, you got the hand skills, man. And that's just, um, good for you. That is so huge. I mean, that goes so far just for your, you know, self-esteem, just for your confidence, everything. I mean, if it's from your peers to be in something like that, no, they they knew that you go give this girl the award and she going to be coming to every course we have. No, (laughs) (laughs) now she's sold. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. Uh, That's so cool. Have you ever met uh, Frank and talked to him? Frank Spear? Um, yeah, I've met Frank, you know, I used to be really obnoxious and whenever I would see him, I would say, Frank, can we take a selfie please? (laughs) And, um, (laughs) and he's always just so sweet and says, okay. And what's even sweeter is, you know, how many Frank Spear fans there are out there and he'll still see me and remember my name and say hi, which I think is awesome. Oh, that's Um, cool. Yeah, but I have since found out that he really doesn't actually like to do that. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to be wooed and and adored and pictured and stuff as yeah. much. So I try and leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I always ask whenever I talk to people, it's yeah, what's Frank like, man? He's like, and he's like, You're kind of calm and quiet, Sean. And I'm thinking, yeah. yeah, this dude wouldn't like me. He'd probably be like, who's this loudmouth kid? I go, I'm just, a, I'm just a dental technician, Frankie. Let's go. Hang out. I was like, no, bro. No, no that's awesome. Yeah. He's a, God, he's just such a, such a great respected man in the field of dentistry and what he's brought to oh the table God. for a lot of people, man. And uh, yeah. you know, I just hear great things and it's just, uh, that's what it's all about. You know, he's earned it. He's been in this field a long time and I just think it's great. You know, it's, it's the, the pinnacle in, in, in dental tech and uh, dental education. And uh, yeah. if I was a dentist, I'd be out there and I'd be financing the house and taking a second or whatever else. <laughs> like I did to start my lab. I took a second on the yeah. house and got some SBA loans and a leap of faith. But um, that's what I think for any dentist, that's just trying to get better and to do good to come take some of the courses. I mean, it's just important. What kind of courses have yeah. you taken there? Tell me a little bit about some of the different courses that you've taken and what you think uh, has brought to the table for you. Um, gosh, I've taken, I've taken most of the courses there. I think my favorite, if I had to pick one is the facially generated treatment planning workshop. And I think a lot of dentists get hung up on the cost of it. It's probably six grand or something, but I would say, you know, like you said, you cannot afford not to take this class. You've got to find a way to afford it. And, um, the way that they teach it, Frank especially just has a way of saying things um, in a way that you feel like he understands you and like, oh my God, somebody has been there and has felt this same level of incompetence in, but oh God, there's a solution and here's how we're going to get there. Yeah. Uh, it's always stuff that you can come back Monday morning and you put to work right away, which is not true for most CEs. You know, you have to spend some time and figure out how you're going to implement. But man, I am, I think I am Spears biggest fan. (laughs) Yeah, that's all. No, that's so true. And from what I hear is just to, to know it is one thing, but to teach it is another and they just teach it and they make it and they break it down so, so nicely where sometimes I hear like, the AACD stuff, they're trying everything they can to make it really tough for you and just, well, <laughs> yeah. to, you know, doing everything they can. And it's like, dude, that's not what it's about. You you want to get all the GPs and everyone else to try to be accredited through you guys and not make it so tough and so out of reach for so many people. Why not try to teach it? Kind of like what Frank does. They really break it down and make it easy for you where you can come back and, and implement it and use it. And yeah, if this six grand or if it's a 50 grand total thing to take all these things, that is nothing, man. And that's coming from yeah. a technician telling me that if doctors just realize 
invest in yourself, it'll come back tenfold. Invest in your education, it'll come back to you. If you go and take oh, these, sure. like like the Warren Dentition one is the one I really love, I hear about. Yeah. And it's just something, man, all the cases that you could be doing in the future and have confidence, it's going to come back more than tenfold. And it's just, it's kind of like faith, you know, you, oh, I'd have faith if I knew for sure. No, well, that's not faith. <laughs> you know, you got to, yeah. you put a little bit of faith in this because it's a real deal. Invest yeah. in it. And I'll tell you, man, it comes back to you. But I just know with me, I've always done it in anything I do. Like I, we talked about, you know, consultants and different people and, I learned from probably one of the best lab guys in the industry and, you know, and then even on my own, I wanted to bring other people in to, to see what I could do to, to bring it to the next level. And that's what we do. And it's what we did. And yeah. that's why where we're at, but same thing in the dental careers of these younger dentists and even the ones that are floundering, you know, get out there and uh -huh. take some courses that can help you help you improve. And, you know, I always say you can be miserable making a million a year and miserable making 20 million a year. You might as well be making 20 million, right? You're saying miserable. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and having fun doing it. I think what comes with the confidence is just like, you know, now you can do a big case and have fun with it instead of, you know, what, what I used to do is be like, uh, I hope this turns out okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't really know what it's supposed to be like, but <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> no, I hear you, man. It just comes with confidence and, you know, looking forward to them. And I, I got a lot of dentists that are just, once they get their skills down, they really, you know, get the management part down and they get a staff that's been with them a long time. It's just, it's a joyous thing. It's, it's really easy when you come in and do your part and your staff and team are doing their parts and you have a kick-ass dental lab that's doing their part. It really yeah. is a very rewarding, great, you know, great, great field that we're in. And I just try to keep up, you know, like keep people, you know, just you know, their attitudes positive and just try to, you know, guys, this is great. And then I got some dentists that just the sky is falling and it, that's just the way they are. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> and life is good. Be happy. But some people are just wired that way. But uh, what are your thoughts in the new dental technology that's out there in dentistry? Anything that you like that you're seeing that you're thinking about bringing on board? Tell me, tell me about some of the dental technology uh, interests that you have. I, um, Man, this technology is so amazing. I can't believe what is out there. Um, I am treading lightly on the, yeah, on no. all the new stuff. I feel like there's so much to learn. And it's, I right now do not have the desire to be a lab tech. You know, like yep. you guys have been doing it for so long. You are the specialists. I like to do what I do and send you a nice impression and, and go from there. Um, so I'm not... I'm not jumping on the the whole CAD CAM thing quite yet, but okay. um, maybe in the future. That's it's on the horizons for sure. Yeah. Um, Has Doctor Fleming and Peri been trying to wor work you into the Seric doctors there a little bit over at Spear? <laughs> a little. Well, <laughs> I was almost ready to go, and then I chickened out and uh, <laughs> bought a house instead. So. <laughs> uh, no, that's probably a better investment. No, I'm not saying. <laughs> no, Seric's great, man, and for a lot of guys, it works and does wonders. And like I always say some of my best doctors are the Sarah guys because they just practice as such a high magnification and it makes all my guys that do get into it that are you know just doing conventional dentistry that they go and, and when they get into the Sarah it makes your practice better dentistry it makes you take a better impression no doubt about yeah, it I guarantee yeah. you and a lot of my guys that give me the crappy impressions this and that and i tell them hey i'll help you with this and that and they're like no i ain't doing that because they know in the back of their head they got to change the way they practice they got to start giving me good preps and give me because you know you can't go to that next click unless that margin's clear and it's isolated and ah, i just love it you know it's a it's a great thing i at, at the beginning of it all i used to oh sir guys this and that i don't care yeah. even if it's 10 20 percent of the population in dentistry starts using it i'm not worried it's just because they're always going to still be using me for different stuff. And um, they're still, you know, 80% of the other dentists that are going to be doing it my way, you know, with the lab. Yeah. But it's just something. That's true. I embrace it. You know, I just, uh, it's yeah, technology. It's and, it's healthy. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's the way of the future technology. And, you know, 
shit, I'm just worried about when they get a, a dang machine in there where they can click it and the damn thing pops out like the Jetsons, kind of like the Sarek does, but it can do my 13 teeth or 14 teeth in like, and the speed is better <laughs> in an hour and it's all glazed up and it's all just beautiful. And that's yeah. when, uh, oh, the lab might be, uh, it might be concerning for lab owners, but um, I, I don't know if it'll get to that in my lifetime. But, nah. And my boys, you yeah. know, they'll have to deal with that. And then, you know what? You guys are going to have to earn your money now, finally. Okay. <laughs> You're going to have to deal <laughs> with this. Out, but not <laughs> in your lifetime, maybe. Huh? Yeah. Well, they might go to college and go to spirit and learn dentistry that they'll do able to do it themselves now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never know uh so what about on your tell me about your ce uh i know you do spear and i got do you go to many conventions tell me a little bit about your ce journey what you do where you go and tell me if it's frank it's here it's there tell me a little bit about that if you could my intro to being like a ce a holic came from a they're like a local occlusion group that um the like old school nathology. So okay. I kind of learned from them functional stuff. And what I noticed is I was doing a lot of really functional, ugly dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I did that and then took a lot of occlusion CE and I felt like I really had a handle on occlusion and joint health and all of that. And, um, and at that point, I, I went into more of a cosmetic thing because, like, who cares if you have really great function if your teeth look like crap, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've been learning about how to make it look good, too, and kind of blending the two, um, you know, form and function. And um, so that's been really fun. Recently, I'm taking a little dental hiatus. I still go out to spear. I think I only went out there five times last year <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome though man yeah. tell me a little bit about a day in the life of your dental practice what's it like how many days a week you're working and tell me what a typical day is and and how you roll there um i think i'm so spoiled i've got a pretty easy setup here i run um, i've got two hygienists and then i mostly just work out of one chair and um so I see one person at a time, probably up to eight people a day in my column and then hygiene checks. But I work uh, Monday through Thursday, eight to five, and um, I take every other Monday off. So sometimes I'm still here catching up and stuff, but those uh, those three day work weeks to me are where it's at. <laughs> oh, no, that's sweet, man. That's a yeah. that's a nice little uh, work schedule for sure. So I know yeah. you're into like um, interoral photography and stuff. How would you get into that? Tell me a little bit how, why you got involved and who was some of your maybe mentors on that. Yeah, we well in all of these big courses you take at Panky Spear anywhere. You know, everyone's showing off their dentistry and teaching you how to use these photos for patient presentations. And um, so I, I hired a photographer. He's local here in Denver, Bill Moore. And he uh, basically will just set you up with um, some settings, some presets where okay. you learn, um, you put it on this one for intraoral and you put on this one for portrait. But I found that if you can show the patient, it, you know, and this isn't, that little camera that's hooked up to your x-rays and you take a picture of one tooth at a time. This is more like a global view of the whole mouth. Okay. But I think if you can show somebody their whole mouth instead of one tooth at a time, they're more likely to look at it as uh, like a system that works together versus, you know, if you take a picture of one tooth with a crack, they'll fix that one. Oh, absolutely. Um, but after, you know, I started doing that with the presets for a little while, but I got more into it where we were taking some really cool portraits and I find that nothing makes your dentistry look better than being able to take a really nice picture of it. And uh, we were doing some portraits and having fun with that. And I've gotten, I've gone a little off the deep end and <laughs> learning from these like high fashion photographers. So we're having a lot of fun just dressing people up and putting them in gowns or um, suits and just 
you know, I think that if you, you can become a completely different person if you've got the right smile. Oh, and that's sure. what the, the portraits are all about is, you know, who could you become if, if you were able to smile wholeheartedly? So we've been having fun with that. Oh, that's so huge. And, you know, photography, it's so important. It really is. And especially, I mean, there's some of those computer mock-ups where you can take a picture and it's kind of funky and it's a little weird, but, uh, I always, you know, I, I just think, you know, pictures worth a thousand words for sure. And, and yeah. with, with dentistry, I mean, it's just, it's important to be able to, you know, what, what kind of camera do you got? Like a D10 or something like that? Or what kind of camera are you rolling with? It's a Nikon D7000. Okay. So, yeah, the mm -hmm. whole thing is, yeah, what settings this and that and, you know, do you need a diffuser? Do you need this? And, <laughs> I mean, I, I've had Hornbrook here a lot. And, uh, man, that guy and his camera, I mean, I think he's probably a better photographer than he is anything. I mean, he's a great dentist, yeah. but uh, he's a really good photographer. It's like, oh, sure, don't <laughs> worry. I'll, I'll, Yeah, that looks a little funky over here. Oh, well, we'll take care of that right here. Bing, bing, bing. And, you know, but uh, no, it's important. I mean, it's a big, big part yeah. of it. You know, it really does when you start doing those, you know, interior aesthetics and stuff like that. So that's pretty huge. Yeah. Yeah, who cares if you're doing good dentistry if you can't show it to anyone, I think. <laughs> exactly. No, it's so neat. There's a thing, too, that I did way back and with uh, Dr. Frank Spears' old partner, uh, John Coys. I've had him here at my lab, and uh, he gave us a lecture and stuff. And it was just really neatest thing. He has these things that are, it's actually four to 13 and they come in three sizes and it's just like a set of perfect teeth and they're like B1 or they got like an A3, like two different colors, but they have small, medium and large. And so basically, you know, for the heights of the teeth, you know, I think some are eight, some are nine, some are 10 or nine, 10, 11 or whatever, just for different, uh, patients different size mouth so basically what you do you pull the adhesive off and you cut off say if you're working just seven through ten so you cut off the rest and then you stick these on the teeth you dry the teeth and it's just the most amazing thing that then they go and take the photography and they show the patient or they show the patient in the mirror with it from six to eleven or four through thirteen and these oh, just wow. adhere to the teeth and it's just a trial just to show the patient like you're saying this is kind of what we could do. And maybe, maybe they have short teeth or where you need to, you know, um, extend the gingival, you know, you gotta, you know, go sub gingival three or four millimeters more. You got to extend the teeth. Well, you have the links on this and everything proper, you know, links, but what a great thing. And I got boxes and boxes of these and I was giving them out for a few years to my, uh, dentists like candy and they're like they love wow. it so they just buy it directly because i'm not in i make money doing my teeth but i just said don't just buy it through yeah. those guys but it's the neatest thing i got some i'm looking at right here in front of me that i just have on my uh computer <laughs> that um it's just they're amazing and it's just so much better than when they have it in their mouth right then and there while they're sitting in the chair and they can look at the perfect grill, you know, and it's just yeah. the upper, it's just the uppers too. I, he might have lowers, but when do you put a lower on and pull your lip down and go, look at these. I mean, it's, it's mostly the, you know, the six or 11, four through 13. But like I said, you can a little snip off of it, whatever you want. And then you pull off the adhesive and stick it on. And it's, it's just an amazing tool for kind of selling, it's, it's kind of selling to the patient, but I loved them. Yeah. I, I, I think I was his biggest customer for a while. They're giving me calls, Sean, you're not doing them anymore. I said, well, <laughs> dude, there's those things are expensive. You know, they're kind of expensive. I don't even know what they charge now, but eh, just a, uh, wait. What are they called? You know, I don't even know. I don't even know what they're called okay. anymore. They're uh, they're just uh, they're just a tool to kind of let the patient know, and they come in three yeah. sizes of uh, you know for anterior teeth only. And uh, I'm sure Koi's they have it on their site somewhere, but I'm I'm yeah. sure we can get Frank to do some here or something. No. <laughs> we might <Yeah>. want to, <laughs> no. But, no pressure, no yeah. pressure. I, I never, you know, you never know. I think uh, they might have uh, turned it over to someone like Patterson or who knows. I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure, but uh, I wish I had that name offhand. But uh, it's a pretty neat little thing there and just another little tool in your belt for, you know, oh, practice and dentistry. Tack <laughs> teeth. There you go. That's it. That's I it. <laughs> that is a, they're really cool, man. I mean, it's a, it's just something. Um, 
even two I do it with some of my techs out here back in the day when we were going to see who would look really great on a makeover because we got, you know, plenty of patience, you know, for our operatory here. So we'd uh, put the tack teeth on and, oh, they'd almost start crying in the, just looking at them in the mirror when they seen them. Like, yeah, you could look like that. And, you know, that's cool. Kind of, kind of neat, you know, a little different, you know, yeah. to have them there. And you never know. Cause I always tell the doctors, like, you know, when you're not sure with the patient, you know, and they're in their chair, at least take an impression, get some study models and then send them off to me. And what I can do is I'll do a full workup and, you know, give you a prep guide and I can do, you know, a custom wax up four to 13 or whatever you want, up or lower. I could just do a wax up to show them ideal length sizes, or I can do a custom uh, temporary. We do pro temps where they're custom made temps and ourselves will do it, you know, instead of doing them direct mm -hmm. chair side off of Siltec made tricks, you know, we can do them full on for you, have them all done. But then again, you have to pet prep the patient at that time. <laughs> but, but what I say is like, tell the doctor, take an impression, send it to me. I can do you a wax up so you can get the patient back in just to show them what they would do. And what I would do is I'll charge it out on that. But if they don't want to do it, no problem. I'll credit it back. But um, and if they do do it, I'll go ahead and credit it back too, you know, because it's kind of a gift, uh, like yeah. help you out, you know, because I don't make any money on temps. I make money on teeth. But uh, some of my doctors, they oh, like doing nice. that. And then after like 10 cases, like I said, dude, I got charge on these temps, baby. But first few I'll right. do. But, but for a patient to have that in front of them to see it is one thing. And that just sells and not that he sells. It just shows them what is possible. But also yeah. these tack teeth, they do it instantly where you don't have to do models, this and that. So it's it's either or, but those both help quite a bit to w wow the patient to really show what they have, you know, you know, available mm -hmm. to them to make a difference. Because teeth, like you said, man, it, teeth make such a difference in a person. Just it's, you know, it's just uh, it's kind of your eyes and your teeth are the first thing you look at. And it's just yeah. poor people, man. They don't have the ways or the means or or some guys just, you know, they don't realize it. Some people that God, it's so easy to fix your bite and <laughs> fix your restoration right. to fix your teeth. And it'll just um, I don't know. It's just something that I, I really love doing. I love yeah. making teeth for the people and changing their lives. And I just I think it's the greatest thing in the world. Well, heck, man, I can't thank you enough. Uh, anything you want to say about Spear to throw out there at the end here for anyone thinking about coming on out and and seeing some of the court? Any any ideas of what they should start first or not? Anything you can throw out to some of the people thinking about uh, going out to Spear Education? Uh, well, you can get a week free trial of the online courses. So that might be a good place to start. But um, like I said, you can't afford not to. And um, I just am so thankful for what I've learned at Spear. So thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's so cool. Well, Dr. Waking, thank you so much. If there's anything I can ever do, please feel free to give me a call. And uh, thanks for coming on board of the Dental Up podcast. We really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. We'll talk to you later. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Up Podcast Show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Up Podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.